just starting out blacksmithing, you've probably made a couple of knives already because knives are cool. Uh, a lot of people start out with railroad spikes or just like this, just mild steel. Problem is, neither of those things are real great steel for knives. Railroad spikes are medium carbon at best, and mild steel is worse, if anything. So today I'm going to try an old-fashioned method of increasing the carbon content in this shitty mild steel to see if I can harden it. Steel is an iron alloy with a small portion of carbon. When a metal is liquid, other elements can dissolve into it, pretty much like salt in water. This is how steel and other alloys are produced in the modern world. In the case of steel, however, if you get it hot enough while solid in an atmosphere of carbon monoxide, the metal will actually sponge up carbon. More time in these conditions means a higher carbon concentration just beneath the surface and deeper penetration into the metal. It ends up forming a high carbon shell transitioning to a low carbon core. This is diffusion, and affects the same as a fart spreading across a room. Sounds like a stupid analogy, but my first example, ink bleeding through paper, actually involves capillary action. So it is in fact better this way. The way I am going to do this is to fill a pipe with ground up charcoal as my source of carbon, stick the knife in, and heat it up for a while. The store didn't have a plain steel pipe that would fit my knife in it, so I had to get a galvanized one. I used acid to make the zinc go away. I drilled a small vent hole in one of my pipe caps so it doesn't become a pipe bomb. I filled as much as the pipe as possible with charcoal and then stuck the knife in, filling in more powder behind it. The abundance of carbon will react with the oxygen left in the tube and any that enters through the vent, producing the necessary carbon monoxide. Very little charcoal should burn off in the furnace. A quick word about the knife, it's in the style of a common type of ancient Roman blade. It was just an experiment in forging the shape with no reference photo, but it'll do for this experiment. Mine just has a little more blade length than typical rivet holes that are too big, and the loop is drawn rather than punched. Got this all set up, and ready to fire, before I even thought to check if this fits. Not even fucking close. Slight adjustment to the plan here. About the best I can do. So I've got it in there with the sharp side down. That's the part that really needs to get hot. It doesn't really matter if I harden the handle. Now the thing about this is if the metal doesn't get to about 900 degrees Celsius or roughly 1650 Fahrenheit, I think, uh, this isn't going to work at all. It's not like if uh, you don't get it hot enough, it only works a little bit. The carbon will only diffuse into iron if it is above a very specific temperature. So with a little bit of it sticking out of the furnace like this, it could just not reach that temperature. Now that point happens to be almost exactly the melting point of brass. So I've got this little crucible with a scrap of brass inside it that I will be putting inside the furnace so uh, I'll keep an eye on it and when it melts I'll know that at least the inside of the furnace is up to temperature and that's when I'll start my stopwatch. About a half hour should be good at the soaking temperature. Now, since I'm not as sure this is going to work anymore I'm going to stick a sample piece of steel in um, about the transition between the blade to the handle uh, so, theoretically it should get to the same temperature that the knife itself does. And I can take that scrap out after I'm done firing it and do a spark test on the grinder to see how well it actually worked.
I always plug the torch hole with foil. It prevents the flame from drawing in outside air and cooling the furnace atmosphere. Sometimes messing with it puts the torch out, though. A scrap piece of pipe helped contain the flame above the exhaust hole, giving a little extra heat to the exposed end. I think there's starting to be a puddle down there. Can't really see shit on the camera. I'll poke it with a stick in a minute to verify. Oh yeah, it's melty. <laughs> yeah. Probably going to give it a couple minutes, let the inside of the tube catch up. Guess it's also a good sign that the pipe hasn't blown up yet. If it hasn't by now, I don't think it's going to, so it's probably relatively safe to stick my face over it. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now. Notice the inside of this pipe is getting a white residue on it. That's all the zinc coming out of the brass and off the outside of the tube and sort of condensing on the inside of the pipe. You know, up until about the Industrial Revolution, the furnaces in Europe that produced metals could not produce metallic zinc. But there was still some brass production from at least the early Iron Age, uh, brass being an alloy of copper and zinc. Uh, at the time, it was produced by a process called cementation, where they would just take a crucible, stuff it with scraps of copper and powdered zinc ore, and heat it in a furnace until all the zinc would come out of the ore as a gas and deposit itself onto the surface of the copper and diffuse its way in, producing the alloy. And you can see part of that process happening here as it condenses on the sides of the pipe. amount of it got hot. Moment of truth, here's a piece of junk mild steel, and my sample. I'd say that worked. It sounds harder. Do all the, the, all do, the popping sparks, do, the, do the junk steel. Yeah, and very little carries around the wheel on the junk steel. Yeah. I wonder if I can shatter this. Oh wow. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, you got a good depth. You can see it. Yeah. You got that's 40, like a that's 40, a full millimeter. Yeah. You bet you got 40,000, 40, 000, 40 51 thousandths is a millimeter. Yeah, that's let's see. I said 40. <laughs> With the blade successfully carburized, I used the furnace to normalize three times, letting it air cool from red heat. You're supposed to quench it just when it gets hot enough to lose magnetism, so I waved a magnet at it to see how hot that is. Oh, shit. Ow, damn it. It was not hot enough. 
Oh, that's a problem now. I used old motor oil to quench since that's what I had handy. I heated it up with some junk steel to lower the viscosity. It helps the oil circulate faster and actually cools the metal quicker than cold oil. <laughs> cool. I'm going to have to let it cool off in the air to let the spine get to temperature and drop it back in and hope the edge comes back up to temperature quicker. Now they say it stops being magnetic at cherry red, but I would call that orange. It looks cherry red on the video. I bet you in sunlight. All right, I'll just do it. Let's go. After tempering it in the oven for an hour at 400 Fahrenheit, I mostly cleaned up the blade with abrasive stones and riveted some period correct bone scales to the handle. I didn't record most of that since it's not really the point of the video, but I just thought I'd let you know that bone dust smells really nasty. The handle may seem awkwardly short, but it's actually slightly longer than any example of this type I found. It still feels comfortable to hold with the pinky finger in the loop. So that process was easy enough. If you've got a propane forge or even an electric kiln, you can try it yourself. Um, it's obviously more work than just using a high carbon steel to begin with, but I thought it was interesting to try. Thanks for watching. I've been making more and more ancient Roman stuff, but there will always be some fabrication and such in the mix, so if you're into either, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Yeah.